Ladies and gentlemen, social media all around the world share my video information from today with all society. This new rule is a put share information and the behavior and don't talking to someone or his character. They want to attack a freedom. They want to attack a freedom to start to 40 people to 50 people. They want to attack them. When they are attack them, be stronger. And the prayer God says thank you to give me this test. He will protect you with this problem. You will get profit from this problem. Remember three months ago, I received a message in the government that they have a video. God, he come with the video. He said, don't scare Don't scare We will protect, we'll protect people we want. He show many video, his video, God, I'm Isaiah. How he will protect us in the problem when he starts to take, take action. This this video, there was there was the, the, I was there. They gave me like a food in the arm, and he showed me another people in the line. They, they go they go to receive food. There was not there was not more fifty people. Now when they attack you, you are forty. Now you are fifty. Be stronger. Be strong. God he will protect you. To this suffering you will get profit. This suffering you will be say thank you God to give me this test. Be strong. Be happy. God he will protect you. His video he was show me his people he want to protect. They are not fifty people. Now, now, now they want to attack, they are 40 to, to go up, they are not 50, they are not more 50. This is the want first to attack, they want to attack for freedom. People they are talking freedom, they share, they share freedom. Government, they are not allowed to charge any, any people who share his stuff. Them, they are about half of the society. And them, they are they, they talking, they're talking in behalf of the society. And all, them all, they, they're talking in their society to listen. Now when the society share his stuff, they're not allowed to blame, to blame him when he did he doing them illegal. Politicians, when they're talking in their society, have rights to talking his behavior, his character, his, his action. Someone, when his action is poor, Meaning you're talking his behavior and his character. A, B, C, all news, when they put their story to news, your society they have right to share. Why is they put in a public place, society to share, to listen? People who go in social media, all social media, society they have right to share his stuff and to comment to his stuff and to talking his character and his behavior. Okay, share my video to everybody. To, to receive this kind of my video today. And another, another they want to attack, to use the social media, special Twitter. Nahim Twitter to start to attack a society, not to publish his story. Like the attacker ABC, go to ABC watching some woman he doing interview. He was doing interview to society since I started campaign to want to blame my language I use. Society they not they not support him. Now look 
this all of the he was a, he want to put to blame me they put to this to this new rules now you have to know abc this woman she she's a not abc owner she's a government because this group they're thinking them or herself him is the manager is the supervisor for them to give to give to give to, to doing to to get information to another people and to publish information to another people when they follow on him to take order. Now you are not looking with the take order, his order to blame society. This is the, he was doing interview society in the TV. Follow his video interview since I started campaign deadline. You are finding what I'm talking to. You. Ever you doing interview to ABC with this, this woman, you have to know you, you, you cause the problem yourself. Don't go to do interviews there, go to social media, send him inter you interview to social media, everybody to know when you get problem to know where you, your problem is coming from. Okay, share with the society, Australia, or to share each other to listen in my video today. By prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6-7. Anxiety. This is something that is shaking our society. It's shaking our nation. One of the things I was most concerned about, you've heard about the droughts and the floods and the fires and the pandemics. We even had a mice plague in Sydney, sorry, in, in New South Wales. I, I told the story in the previous service I have it on other places. One day I was at the National Security Committee meeting of Cabinet and Josh Frydenberg, great friend, I turned to him, I said, Josh, I think it's time we let your people go. One of the things that I was very concerned about and remain concerned about as a Member of Parliament is mental health. It, the mental health strains and stresses and the anxieties that are driven in our societies is having a real toll on people. How are you feeling? Those statistics say that there's quite a number of you here today who are anxious. And while we're excited and happy and about the celebrations we've had this morning and the kids and the cakes and opening the tower and all of that, that's great. But it's there, isn't it? You're anxious. Many of you today. We need to talk about it. During the pandemic, we were very concerned of course, about the, the physical loss of life that we were facing. But one of the things right at the outset we were concerned about is how people's mental health would be impacted by the isolation, the fear. And anxiety is different to fear. Fear, fright or f and flight, these are natural responses that we have as human beings. And sometimes they're quite useful things. You've got a big dog that's running towards you with big teeth, <laughs> not coming for a pat. And fear sets in, wisely, the fright, and you, flight. That's sensible. I'm not talking about fear. I'm talking about anxiety. Anxiety is longer lasting. Anxiety can be overwhelming. It can be debilitating. It is, can be an agony, a dread. It can be debilitating. It is, can be an agony, a dread it, about the future, about your feeling of hopelessness or incapacity to deal with a situation that is ahead of you and it can shut you down. And, you know, um, it typically emerges in adolescence from a clinical perspective. It can make you very, very sick. Worry can make you sick, very sick. Heart, headaches, nausea, diarrhoea, shortness of breath, um, chest pains. And it can also lead to depression, self-harm, panic attacks, substance abuse, disrupted sleep patterns. It can affect your appetite. It can be a, a forerunner to eating disorders, self-harm, substance abuse, even psychosis and other mental illnesses. So this is serious. 
This is not something where you go, teaspoon of cement, harden up, move on. And it's not helping anybody. This, and, you know, through all that, I, I understand, I want to be very clear about this. When we're talking about mental health, uh, there are very real causal factors that can relate to this at a clinical level. Of course, there's biological issues. There's issues about your brain chemistry and all of this. And for, for mental health and mel med serious mental illness and psychosis, then you, you need professional treatment and clinical treatment on these things. That's not really what I'm talking about today when I'm talking about anxiety. Anxiety is, is, is the forerunner to so many of these things, and that's what I want to talk to you about. But when I look carefully at the many treatments that were provided, particularly for dealing people with anxiety, I saw a lot of parallels about what I was learning and always known about God and how God seeks to engage with us. It's funny how that happens, isn't it? That people in a secular sphere discover what we already know in a spiritual sphere. And it's the truth of God. It's the truth of God. No matter what society, no matter how they might seek to deny it or even dismiss it, or the truth of God stands up and shines through as we were singing. So, you know, one of the most important things in all of these treatments for anxiety is and those suffering, especially with mental illness, is people need to know they are seen, that they're acknowledged, that they're heard, that they're listened to, that they're understood, that they're not making it up, that they're not soft or, or weak. Or if you go back into the sort of stigma that is attached to mental illness, people are taught to think like that. And they're broken and they're, and they're hurting and, and, and they're living a nightmare every single day. And one of the first things that the counsellors try to do as they walk into, whether it's Headspace or Head to Health Centres that we establish or any of these, is to say, you matter. I see you. I see the pain that you're going through. I can hear you. I'm listening to you. I'm taking you seriously. I'm acknowledging what's happening to you. You are at the centre of this conversation we're having. And you know, that's how God sees you. That's how God understands anxiety. God knows that anxiety is part of the human condition. I joked before and at uh, the previous service, and Matt's here. If, look, I know this. My physical body, if he and I go and play tennis, not only will it be humiliating, embarrassing for me, he might try and be kind to me as he was when we first met a few months ago. But I tell you what, I'm walking off that court sore, hurt, you know, aching for days. He, he wouldn't even know he'd played. Because that's, the, that's my natural human condition. Anxiety is the same and God knows that. God knows what you're going through. God knows that it's part of who you are as a human being. How do I know that God knows that? Well, he spent three years here on earth with 12 very anxious guys. Every single day. They're anxious. I don't know if you've seen The Chosen. Um, I have watched it, uh, really enjoyed it. I'd encourage you to do it because it focuses a lot on the disciples and their humanity. And I know it's a creative interpretation of it, but it's a great watch because it shows their fallibility, their vulnerability and how they are wrestling with all of this stuff going on. Jesus was there with them every day, understanding their anxieties. What does this mean? They'd leave their families behind. They had stuff going on with their mothers-in-law. They had all sorts of stuff going on and... And Jesus was there walking with them every day, saying things to them that was just blowing their minds. I can imagine their anxiety. God was there with Abraham when he told his wife, I'm just taking Isaac up the hill. And he walked with him up that mountain. God was there when Noah got on that ark. He was with Joseph in prison. When Joseph felt everything was lost. He was with Moses in the desert. He was with Joshua at the walls of Jericho. 
I often reflect on this one, and I did when I was Prime Minister, and the day, in fact, I became Prime Minister. And I reflected on, and I've been reading how Joshua went and walked the walls of Jericho the night before and just going, man, man. Soldier of the Lord turns up as we read. He calmed his anxieties as he did to me on that day. Vince will recall what I, I talked about, the story of Joshua at the wall of Jericho. I joked that uh, Joshua Frydenberg thought I was talking about him. <laughs> a dear friend, great guy. He was with Gideon when his army reduced to 300. He was with David as he was chased by Saul. He was with Elijah when he sat under that bush. He was with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego as when they were looking to throw them in the furnace, the people who were throwing them into the furnace were consumed by the fire. I'm telling you, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego had no, as, as far as we can understand, any foreknowledge about what was about to happen. In their natural selves, it involved a pretty quick end. But yet there they were. And God walked with them through the fire and dealt with their anxieties. Yes, amen. He's with Daniel on the lion's den. He was with Nehemiah on the wall with his sword and his trowel. He was with Esther before the king. He was with Mary when her pregnancy started to show. Could you imagine her anxieties in that cultural setting at that time? Six, eight months dealing with that. He knew, but, you know, how do I know, Jesus, that God understands that anxiety is part of being a human being? The Garden of Gethsemane. That's where the first blood was shed. The night before, as he sweat drops of blood for you and for me in that garden and experienced an anxiety I suspect none of us could possibly even contemplate. He ensured this was written. So for what you're going through right now, when you think that the anxiety, the fears, the various things you're facing and you don't think you can deal with them, he wrote all that down. All of those stories. So you can know that he knows, that he gets it, he understands it, he sees you, he understands you, he's listening to you and he is there and ever present help. In time of need. And you know God has gone before us. As we we confront these anxieties. And he has answered them. And I believe that. uh, You know when we look over the, the, the key causes of anxiety. I think they fall into four categories. And again I want to be clear. Particularly for those watching on. I'm not talking about the biological issues. That require proper medical um scientific treatment. I'm talking about the the everyday anxieties that we face. That can actually lead to those type of things. It's true, but God does. And whatever those things are that you think are holding you back and the things in your past, and you know, Satan is known as the accuser, the great accuser, and he'll keep throwing this stuff at you. But God on the cross said, no, no. You are forgiven for all of it, everything, everything you have done, everything that you will.